<laughs> oh, hello there. How are you doing? I, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, welcome to my first ever video. Today we're going to be covering the mechanization function script system that I've recently coded for Minecraft 1.12. Uh, mechanization attempts to recreate popular tech mods like thermal expansion, IC2, and mechanism uh, by adding in an energy grid system to Minecraft, complete with machines, generators, uh, batteries, and everything of the like. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Mechanization is split up into different modules that serve as add-ons to the base module which contains the core functionality of the system. In order to get started, we'll be covering the base module as it contains everything you need in order to get started with mechanization. Now, the first thing you'll want to do when, when using mechanization is to create an industrial machine crafter. You can do this by throwing a crafting table on top of an anvil. The industrial machine crafter serves as the custom crafting table for all of mechanization and will be used for the re crafting recipes. I'd like to point out that I will be covering the crafting, crafting recipes in this video, but that they are also available on the forum post for this if you would like to reference them later. Now there are a couple key differences between the industrial machine crafter and a normal crafting table. The first is that ingredients stack, so for example this recipe actually requires 4 iron ingots. The second is that it will immediately take your items and turn it into the result, instead of giving you an option to the side to click on it like a normal crafting table. I would also like to point out that everything in mechanization has an in-game tooltip that describes what the item does. In this case, we have crafted a machine wrench, which is the first major item in the core module. This allows you to safely retrieve machines from the world instead of destroying them. Uh, for example, if you were to break something with a pickaxe, then it would just destroy it and you wouldn't be able to get it back and use it later. But using the machine wrench, you can get it back. Now the second, and probably the more important item in the core functionality of mechanization, are the batteries. These serve as both your capacitors for storing energy and as your transmitters. All energy transmission and mechanization is wireless and is controlled by the batteries. There are no cables. Each battery has a different amount of energy you can store as well as the different transfer rate and range. So for example the tier 1 battery can store 60,000 kilojoules, can transfer 100 kilojoules a second, and has a range of 24 blocks. The tier 2 battery stores 240,000 kilojoules, has a transfer rate of 400 kilojoules and a transfer range of 32 blocks. And a tier 3 battery can store 500 kil 500,000 kilojoules, has a transfer rate of 1,000 kilojoules, and has a transfer range of 48 blocks. Now using the, you can see the recipes for these here, and using a battery is relatively simple. All you have to do is place it in the world, and it will automatically start taking energy from anything that generates it, and transferring it into anything that requires energy. The only other thing to mention is that this bar on top of the battery indicates how full it is, and it will turn green and the more full the battery is. So that's pretty much everything in the core module. It's just the basic functionality of the batteries and the machine wrench, as well as the industrial machine crafter. So let's go ahead and move on to the next major module, which is the Age of Machines. Age of Machines was the first add-on module developed for mechanization and is intended as a showcase for what's possible with the system. It adds in a few basic generators as well as the machines that can help you with automating things around your world. To get started, let's uh, get a couple of generators going so we have power for testing the machines later on. The first and most basic generator is the furnace generator. This generates 32 kilojoules per second using basic furnace fuels. In order for this to run, it requires a smeltable item in the top slot and some kind of furnace fuel in the bottom slot. So let's go ahead and get these running. Now the second type of generator is a solar panel. This generates 8 kilojoules per second based on the sun being overhead. There's also an upgraded variant of the solar panel called a solar array, which generates 32 kilo kilojoules per second. So let's go up on the roof and put these down. So now that our generators have been running for a while and we've got some power stored up, let's go ahead and use this power for something. These are three basic machines added by mechanization that are variations of the standard Minecraft furnace. The first one we have here is called the electric furnace. This is basically a standard Minecraft furnace, except it runs on power. 
It has the same speed and uses 20 kilojoules per second. The next furnace is called the Industrial Furnace. This is an upgraded variant of the Electric Furnace that smelts items at about 48 times normal speed. It uses 200 kilojoules per second. The final furnace is the Ore Grinder. This uses 80 kilojoules per second and has the capability of tripling ore production. For example, we just got three iron ingots from that one iron ore. However, it should be noted that the ore grinder must have the output slot clear in order to continue operation. Putting a hopper underneath the ore grinder should, will provide at about the same rate it can smelt. Now we're going to have to go outside to go for the four more advanced machines. The last four devices in Age of Machines serve to automate various tasks around your world. The first one we're going to go ahead and cover is the Tree Feller. This machine, for the cost of 64 kilojoules per second, will automatically cut down any tree it finds above it. It should be noted that the Tree Feller only works with the four original tree types of Oak, Jungle, Spruce, and Birch. So you can see here, it is emitting a laser that is cutting down the tree. And with an automatic collection system, you could easily completely automate tree harvesting. And based on this farm, you can probably tell what the next machine is. It is, of course, the automatic farm. For the cost of 80 kilojoules per second, the automatic farm will harvest all crops in a 7x7 seven seven radius that'll, and replant them. So you can see here that it's harvesting the crops, replanting them. It can handle almost all crops in the game, and with a collection system you could easily automate crop harvesting. The next machine we're going to cover is the quarry. For 100 kilojoules, 120 kilojoules per second, the quarry will dig a, an 11 by 11 hole down to bedrock. It has an automatic copper collection system for which all mined items will be teleported into. Using item streams, you could also increase the size of the collection system to include more hoppers and chests. The fourth and final machine is the mob grinder. For the cost of 96 kilojoules per second, the mob grinder will automatically kill any mobs in a 9x9 area and drop their drops. This works for both hostile and passive mobs. So those are the last four machines in Age of Machines. So let's go ahead and move on to Nuclear Ascension where we will learn how to build large-scale nuclear reactors. Nuclear Ascension brings large-scale mass power production to mechanization for the use of nuclear reactors. So in order to get started with this, I'm going to want to go down to my obsidian basement so that because these things can explode if you're not careful. So the first thing you're going to have to do is commit creeper genocide and get some uranium. It has a 5% chance to drop from creepers. Once you have four pieces, you can get your first fission reactor core. Now before you go all willy-nilly placing this around, you're going to want to protect yourself against the lethal radiation it provides via a hazmat suit. Wearing a full set of hazmat suit will protect you from the radiation from the fission reactor. The next thing you're going to need are steam turbines. You should get at least four of these, but the reactor can technically control up to eight steam turbines. So let's go ahead and build a nuclear reactor. Nuclear reactors work by boiling water around them in a 3x3 three three area. So let's go ahead and fill this area in with water. Once we have that, you can add in the reactor turbines. Not really sure what happened there, probably just some lag. And now that we have four reactor turbines into place, we can start the reactor by throwing some uranium on top. The reactor, the reactor will start to heat up, as you notice the particles coming out of the vents on top. And after just a little bit, you'll notice that the particle effects have now changed, and that, steam, and that, that, and that the reactor is now boiling steam at this point. 
Now as the reactor continues to heat up, it'll continue boiling more steam. And it'll, the steam will spin these turbines, and the turbines will generate power using that steam. Now let's talk about the reactor physics a little bit. The reactor steadily heats up over time at a constant rate. However, whenever it boils water into steam, it cools down the reactor a little bit. At the point where when it's boiling four pieces of water into steam, then the reactor is cooling down at the same rate it's heating up. However, in the event that it attempts to boil water into steam, and there is something in the way that's, and there is no water there, instead of cooling down the reactor slightly, it'll heat it up much faster. And this way, you can increase the amount of steam the reactor is generating to more than four. However, this also greatly increases the chance of the reactor exploding. So you'll have to come up with a system that maximizes the reactor output without it exploding. You'll notice now that the particle effects have changed to steam, now that have changed to flame, now that the, it's, the reactor heat has dramatically increased. So by now, I'm sure you're wondering, what exactly happens when this thing explodes? Well, let's find out. By blocking off all the parts of the, where the reactor can boil water into steam, the reactor will heat up very quickly. In just a few seconds here, you can see it's now generating flame particles. And... Boom. Reactor explosions are very dangerous because they will actually destroy obsidian within a 5x5 area around the reactor. So you have to make sure you have plenty of shielding if you don't want to blow up. Now, that's pretty much it for nuclear ascension, so let's go ahead and move on to gadgets. The final module in mechanization, gadgets, aims to add some cool nifty tools as well as some expensive endgame gear that you can spend your hard-earned resources on. Now in order to get started, the first thing you'll want to create is a player charging pad. By standing on this pad, you'll charge your player's internal buffer of energy. This energy is used for any of the tools, weapons, and armor that require energy. Now the next thing I want to create is a tinkering table. A tinkering table is what is used to apply modifiers to your weapons and armor. The tinkering table differs from the industrial machine crafter in that instead of having a GUI interface, you throw your items on top. This will combine the ingredients into the item that you are modifying. For example, by combining those items, I give this chestplate plus 50% speed. Now for armor modifiers, there are currently three different types. Attributes, Unbreaking, and Custom Enchantments. There are currently four different types of attributes, plus 50% speed, plus 10 max health, plus 25% attack damage, and plus 0.5 knockback resistance. Each piece of armor can only have one attribute at a time. However, different attrib attributes do stack across different types of armor. For example, if I have plus 50% speed on this diamond chestplate, and I get plus 50% speed on diamond leggings, then I'll have plus 100% speed. The next type of armor modifier is, the, is unbreakable. This is not the same as the attributes and can stack with them. Unbreakable makes this that your armor no longer takes durability damage and cannot break. The final type of armor modifier is custom enchantments. Each piece of armor can have one custom enchantment, and these do not stack across different types of armor, so having slow fall on a diamond chestplate and diamond leggings would have no effect. These do not interfere with normal enchanting mechanics, so you can still put this in an enchantment, enchantment table and get, say, Protection 4 on it. Each of the custom enchantments requires energy to run. To start with, the Slow Fall enchantment will make it so that whenever you're falling, you fall slowly. This also negates all fall damage. The next enchantment, Auto Eater, will make it so that when you hold Shift, it will essentially convert energy into food. If you look at my hunger bar right now, you'll see that it is slowly filling up. The next custom enchantment is Shielding. This simply applies in a permanent resistance 2 buff. Next custom enchant is Item Magnet. While you have Item Magnet active, it will automatically teleport any items nearby to you, and allow, allow you to instantly pick them up. Next custom enchant is Night Vision. This just simply applies a permanent Night Vision buff. Then we have Invisibility. 
When you, to activate invisibility, look down and hold shift. While invisible, you are, your armor is hidden and your tools are also hidden. You are free to look around, however you cannot move. In order to go... In order to become visible again, let go of shift. The final enchant is water breathing. Water breathing simply applies a permanent water breathing buff while you are in water. So those are all the armor modifiers, let's move on to the weapons. <laughs> don't worry guys, we saved the best for last. Guns. Guns, 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 guns. But before I get into that, a bit of a disclaimer. The bullet processing uh, for the ray tracing can take a lot of processing power. So for automatic weapons like the rifle, laser rifle, and laser drill, they might cause lag in your computer. Just because they're putting a lot of bullets down range very quickly. In order to craft the guns, you're going to need four gun parts, the stock, the magazine chamber, the trigger, as well as either a gun barrel or a laser gun barrel, depending on the type of gun you're making. You're going to go ahead and put them in this formation, along with an extra ingredient, which are listed down here. For example, the rifle requires a block of iron. These five guns are tier one and require a gun barrel, and these three are tier two and require a laser gun barrel. Now guns function much like you would think they do. They require an ammunition, for example the rifle requires iron nuggets, and then all you have to do is hold right click. The rifle is a general purpose automatic weapon, it does low damage but has a high fire rate. The pistol is kind of your all around general use weapon. It has a steady fire rate and has medium damage. The sniper rifle is your heavy hitter. It does a lot of damage, but has a very slow fire rate. The flamethrower is kind of a fun weapon. It doesn't do very much damage, but has a decent fire rate and hits the target with fire. The rocket launcher is exactly what you think it is. The laser rifle is the same as the normal rifle, except instead of requiring ammo, it requires energy instead. This is where the player charging pad will come in use. You also have the laser drill, which functions and says instead of a weapon, it functions as a mining tool, allowing you to break blocks at a range. The final weapon is the railgun. The railgun is similar to the sniper rifle, however it does slightly less damage. Instead, it is able to hit multiple targets at once. So that's all the guns, however the guns also have additional modifiers, just like the armor, and they are made in the same way. You have poison bullets, weakening bullets, ice bullets, hungry bullets, armor penetrating bullets, and levitation bullets. Did you steal my levitation bullet gun? Alright, well that pretty much wraps it up for the uh, mechanization review. I'm always looking to add more content, so if you have any suggestions for things you would like to see added to mechanization, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, also, if you uh, find any bugs, let me know too. Those those tend to those tend to slip through. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.